J'appelle à présent Javier Diaz Jiménez à prendre place au pupitre pour nous parler de la France, l'Italie, l'Espagne, austérité ou croissance. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here. I'm going to say just a, a few words about, about how countries grow, how countries don't grow, and uh, I'm going to compare the scenarios for uh, Spain, for Italy, and for uh, France. So, um, so, so let's, start, let's start talking ab about growth. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of slides that, that show the current recessions and the recoveries in, uh, in these three countries. Um, the blue line is for France, and, and, and there, I mean, you, you can see things that are similar and things that are different in, in, in all these three cases. First of all, what I have done here is this is levels of, of GDP. It's not growth rates. So, so I have normalized those levels at 100 in, in 2008. And there you can see, of course, all three coincide. Then you see the, the, the recessions in, 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 the three, in, the, in these three countries. Italy was the, the most severe uh, GDP fell by 7% on levels. It's real GDP, of course. Uh, the second one was, this, was this, the Spanish recession, 5% in levels, and then the, and then the French one. And, uh, and then, of course, after that, you've seen, we've seen this um, Keynesian reaction. I will be talking about this uh, more in a little bit in, in, in these three countries, more intense in some than others. The ECB playing its, uh, its passive role as, as, as we had expected it to. And, and, and you see the, the, the clear recovery of, of the French economy, which is, which is now, even though it's stalling in the last part, 2011 and 2012, has almost recovered the, the pre-recession. The pre level and, and, and you see the double dip both in, in Italy a little bit a little bit steeper and then in Spain. So this is so this is what has happened in this last part since 2008 and 2012. Let's let's take the same idea now and, and instead of normalizing at 2008, let's move it back when the European Union was when the when the euro area when the euro when the economic union, monetary union was started, and, and let's see how these three countries uh, have done in the, last, uh, in the last 15, 13 to 15 years. So, so if we move it back now, and now I normalize the 2000, here you see two different, uh, three different growth, pro growth processes. They, they, they share the cycle, so from 2000 to 2008, you see three growing economies, again at different rates. Clearly, the, the, the Spanish story is a story of a, of a booming housing market. Lots of houses were built, they were accounted for in, in GDP accounts, and then, and then recession, and, and of course, and of course, slowdown. In fact, in fact, uh, this this 15, 16 points of, of real growth accumulated by Spain in those in those eight years are probably the the second fastest uh, growth period in in the in the, in Spanish history. So so if we ask the question, has has the euro been been good for Spain or or France? I mean, uh, for Italy, clearly, it's uh, the, the issue is more doubtful because in between between 2000 and 2013, as you can see. Italy has only managed to accumulate four a, a really weak growth of, of four percentage points. So, so basically, the, what we should take from here is that is that this recession, which is severe, which is complicated, and and, and, and its exit uh, is problematic at, at this point of time. Uh, if you put it in perspective. Uh, you see countries that are that are growing like like Europe grows, which unfortunately unfortunately is slowly and and, and 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 in these last few quarters with 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 much with much difficulty. So so uh, the scenarios, if we now move it forward, and, and I use I'm using here again levels, and again again I'm normalizing at, at 2008, and I'm and I'm looking at the at the at the IMF scenarios. There you see a very different story. You see France and it, uh, France and France growing. Uh, the IMF today is predicting seven points by 2017. So so France is going to recover. Again, not a very, not at a very impressive pace, but 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 it will grow uh, sizably. And 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 there you see Spain and Italy with almost a lost decade. And when countries stop growing for such a long time, clearly uh, that, that that creates problems uh, for its for their citizens. Uh, without growth, 
there's no increase in welfare, new households, especially young people, have it find, a, find it very hard to, to start their lives and, 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 and to progress. And, and, and clearly, you know, when, when these countries, plus all the others, have formed part of, of the European project, uh, clearly if this, if, this growth, if this growth scenario uh, does happen, it's hard to see how, how Europe can, can stay together in, in this, in this, with these large differences and with these 10 years wasted that, that, that really affect almost a, an, entire, an entire generation of people. So uh, that's what has happened. So, so the, the, the question is, is, is how can we grow? And, and uh, in economics, we have essentially I guess two, maybe maybe three camps that, that discuss this this that with, with different ideas of what of, about what can be done to to foster growth. Uh, on the first camp, uh, we have we have uh, you know the, 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 this this story of, of uh, the Keynesian story. You know, let's let's increase government spending, let's cut taxes, and and uh, and the economy and the economy will grow. Uh, this is, you know, Paul Krugman, other guys, they know, you know, he, he knows Paul, if you ask Paul, he, he knows how to stop a recession. You know, you read the book, I'm not recommending it by any means, but, but, but it's there. Uh, maybe Paul Krugman also can cure cancer, and, and, and he will tell us, maybe in the next, in his, in his, in his next uh, publication. But of course, this, this Keynesian idea is, is pretty obvious in the short run, if you, if you increase government expenditure or if you cut taxes, there will be uh, growth showing up in, in national income and product accounts. There will be a direct, immediate impact. We've seen that. We've seen how that has helped get the world out of the 2008, 2009 recession. But, but the issue is what happens next? So, so here's where you need Keynesian magic. Keynesian magic is when the government, when the public sector stops spending, somebody takes over. You know, in either the private sector or the foreign sector, they take over and, and growth resumes. And this is what, unfortunately, is not happening. Of course, of course this Keynesian idea has uh, other, other difficult issues that it does not address very clearly, which is what do we spend in? What is it that, that should be the destination of these government expenditures? Of course, Keynes said, who cares? But do we really believe that? I mean, should the government just spend no matter do, no doing no matter what? And if not, and if we need the government governments to spend in in uh, in profitable public projects, what are they? Where are they? Who can identify them? And of course, of course, these questions uh, you know leave some of us uh, not uh, unsatisfied and and force uh, and, and make us look for for other ideas here you see the 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 consolidation in in in, in these three countries again remember the three percent uh, growth and stability and stability pact three percent of of uh, public deficit objective spain in extreme dire straits getting back from this Keynesian frenzy of 2009 where, where Spanish uh, public deficit was 11.2% of GDP. 2011, two years later, we were still in 9.4. There's no way Spain will make that, that 6.3 this year. It's going to be closer to 8%, even though some of these expenditures might be one-off on, on, the, on, the on the bailout of the banking system. Again, here you see France with a much easier uh, uh, path to, to fiscal consolidation, and of course, Italy's public debt is so high that, that nobody lends them so, so enough so to, to, to run large deficits, so, so they run small deficits, but that does not mean they don't need to, to consolidate. Uh, when you start running the deficits, then, then you get the, 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 the debt problem. And, and again, here you see three countries in, 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 in moving uh, with, with increasing debts as a result of these high deficits, and, and in different, but in different situations. Spain came, came from a very comfortable 36% of GDP, and now, and now it has more than doubled that uh, rate, and probably that number is an underestimation of, of true debt of, of the public sector in Spain. France has increased its, uh, its uh, debt to GDP ratio by 50%. So, so, you know, the, the, the burden and the fiscal drag that, that this creates on the public sector and on the possibilities of the public sector cannot be disregarded. 
Uh, Keynes, again, used to say in the long run, in the long run we are all dead. And, and, and that is certainly another, and, and you know, it's obviously true. But, but what's going to happen between now and then? You know, how much debt are we going to, are we going to bear? Uh, and, and, and in this global economy, basically what we have found out in 2009 is the long run has become shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And, and it seems like the long run is already, already today. So you don't, when somebody shoots at you, it, it's not the lead that kills you, it, it's the speed. You know? and, 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 and that's what we're seeing in Europe. We're seeing countries running up debts, piling debts in the public sectors and also in private sectors at, at unprecedented speeds and, and placing stress on, on and crowding out financing. Financing for new growth in, in the European periphery is dear. It's, it's hard to come by. And, and of course, as we all know, without, without financing, uh, it's very, very hard to grow. So, of course, besides this, this Keynesian spenders, then, then we, have, we have the other side. We have, we have the European uh, front, front loading of, uh, of, uh, of austerity. And, and, and it says, no, the way to grow is, is reducing uh, uh, the fiscal drag, cutting expenditures, and, uh, and, uh, and, maybe, raising, and maybe raising taxes. So, so we go into this, into this tax cuts so, so we go into this tax cuts mode, and then again here, this the the the, the cry is, uh, of course, if you if you, yeah, you know, well, uh, that's 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 what we have. Uh, so, it, it's not nice. It's not nice. Uh, some some the north of Europe is extremely convinced that it, this is the way to go, and 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 the south. Of Europe, of course, France is in between, and uh, uh, the south of Europe is trying to, you know, to make to make things a little bit, a little bit less uh, hard for for the, for for the for the southern periphery. But 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 it is true that 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 is very hard to see how the European uh, project can can advance with these very high levels of, of debt and with these extremely high levels of, of government deficit in some of these European countries, which are clearly incompatible uh, with, a, with a monetary union. So, so the concern and, and, and uh, we, we need to get an agreement, perhaps, perhaps a solution would be uh, because, because we have 17 different countries in the euro to, to, to have the north uh, reflate, to have the north expand, mm, uh, do some of these further Keynesian uh, government expenditures and, and maybe tax cuts and, and, let, and let the south and let the south do the, the fiscal consolidation. So you have to do the tax cuts. What do you cut? Mm, that, that, that becomes an issue. Um, is it going to be superfluous public expanding or is it going to be health and education and pensions and, and, and create social revolt in the, in, the, in the countries of the Eurozone because, of course, the, the, the welfare state in Europe is one of our more cherished, both in the north and in the south, is one of our more cherished creations and, and, and we need to maintain it. If you don't, if you don't do the, the, the tax cut route, which is politically extremely hard, then, then of course, there is this temptation of, of raising taxes. Uh, the government wants my money, and uh, and in Spain today, if if you do if you do, okay, in, in this graph, Javier, I, I think we'll have to wrap. Okay, I have to wrap. All right, all right. So, well, l let me just say, I pay sixty percent my marginal tax rate if I include my personal income tax rates and my twenty-one percent uh, value-added tax rate. It's sixty percent. You know what? I was almost about not to come here. It's really not worth it. You know, I can stay home and, and just uh, go play tennis. All right, so, so underground economy, but he said I wrap up. The, the third way to, roll, to grow, uh, and, and, and this one is due to another Nobel Prize at, at Prescott. Uh, he says, if you ask Ed, unlike, unlike Paul, Ed does not know how countries grow, but, but he knows how countries do not grow. And, and, and he's telling us what we should do is identify what are the barriers to growth and do something about them. 
if you take here, I have I just 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 a, since I have to wrap up, uh, just just very quickly, mm, mm, I've taken from the from the World Bank doing business report. Uh, uh, what are the, the difficulties? Some of the measured, identified, and ranked difficulties in doing business in France, Italy, and Spain. And there in brackets, I have cho I've put uh, countries in Africa, which are slightly better than, than Europe. For, insta for instance, if you want to register property, you should go to Chad instead of, instead of doing it in France, which is 146 out of 185 uh, countries in the report. If you want to protect inve investors, if you're an investor and you're seeking protection, in Spain, Spain is ranked uh, 100, and Malawi, it's 99, so you should go to Malawi. And, and you get the idea, I mean, and you can look down there since I have to finish off uh, uh, the difficulties to growth in Italy that scores over 100 in in uh, almost f in five are out of these 11 categories, Spain that, that, that scores two and France that scores one. So, so clearly there is a lot of work to be done in South of Europe in, in removing many of these barriers and perhaps that's one of, the, one of the ways we should go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javier.